Hello um, guys, you're welcome again. So in this lecture, we want to continue um, looking at you know, the parabolic equation in 2D. Uh, here, I want to look at the alternating direction implicit or ADI method, all right? In the previous one, we looked at the approximate factorization um, approach to solving uh, the 2D parabolic equation. Okay, so the ADI method is, um, of course, is, uh, is implicit, an implicit method. Um, as we will see, the approach is very similar to um, the approximate factorization approach in, in that you split your computation into two steps. Um, the solution for the unknowns uh, is split into two steps such, such that in the first step you solve for some preliminary solution or intermediate solution, let's call it u tilde. Uh, sometimes it's denoted as u to the n plus uh, one half. Okay, so you solve the first one um, for u tilde, which is an intermediate value. Um, in that way, you, you set up your scheme such that it is implicit in the x direction or in the x terms, and then it is explicit in the y, okay? Very soon I'll show you why that is important. And then, once you have the intermediate solution, you go on to solve for the actual solution in the next step, step two, and it is set up um, in a different direction such that uh, it is implicit for the y derivative terms and explicit for the x terms, okay? So, um, this, is, this is how it goes. Uh, so, we are, we are going to use uh, the Crank-Nicholson scheme to uh, illustrate this, right? So, you have, in the first case, uh, an implicit in x derivative and explicit in y. So, the u tilde are unknowns. So, these are unknowns. That is why it is implicit in the x. The u n's are known. So, in the y, it is explicit. So, that's, that's what we mean. Now, because this is known, this and this time is basically very similar to the 1D case uh, for the implicit 1D approach. And we know that the resultant system of equations are tri-diagonal. And so that is why uh, this approach is powerful in the sense that the resulting matrix for the, this first step would be a tri-diagonal matrix that you can solve. All right? Then, um, but you are solving it for, you know, you tell that, which is not the actual solution. Then in the next step, step two, uh, you reverse the direction for the sweep uh, in that it is implicit in the y. So right now that we know u tilde, this is known, u tilde is known, and now we're going to solve it for the actual solution, solution at time, time level n plus one. So in the y, it is implicit because these are not known, right? It is explicit in the x in this case. Again, because now, this is more like the implicit case um, in the y direction for a 1D problem, right? The resulting matrix is tri-diagonal tri again. And so you can solve using the Thomas algorithm, all right? Um, so I'll, I'll explain a bit more about this and I'll illustrate it in the subsequent lecture so you get, you get more understanding of it. Uh, but for now, we can actually reduce it into a simpler form using the operators that we introduced uh, earlier in a previous lecture. We introduce the operator so that this guy reduces to Lx, you tell that, right? This is Ly, Un, and so on. So if you use the operators, the first equation there can be reduced to this form. The u tilde are unknown, so we can take them to the left-hand side, and then the Un to the right, and we will get this, this equation here, all right, in a more compact form. So now we are going to solve for u tilde. What you do is solve for u tilde because the uns are known, the side is known. Um, and once it is in this form, this equation now is um, a tri diagonal matrix form that can be solved for u tilde. And then uh, equation 18, which is this guy, this equation here now reduces if you use the operators to this form. Uh, now, the un plus ones are unknown, so you can bring them to the left-hand side. U tilde are known from this computation here, so you take them to the right-hand side, and then you have equation 20. 
and now you can solve the equation 20 again using the Thomas algorithm you um, um, plus one okay so basically these are the two steps solve the first equation which is this I have just rewritten them here for uh, the intermediate solution you tell that uh, once you have you tell that you plug it here uh, so the right hand side here is known then you solve for your final solution at n plus time level n plus one all right and in each case all right in each case you have a Thomas algorithm but again as I will illustrate when you are solving in this case you move in one direction let's say if you move in the horizontal direction right in the next step to obtain a tri diagonal system you need to alternate that direction so now you have to move vertically when you are computing in other words when you take an i you solve for different values of j that is what is going to give you a tri diagonal system that is why the method is called the alternating direction implicit method and uh, we'll see that later but the method um because if you look at it it's basically like the cramp nicholson right it's basically cramp nicholson scheme in, in each of the steps because of that all right the truncation error is second order in both space and time all right and the scheme is unconditionally stable for this 2d case if you if you move to the 3d case um it is conditionally stable there's a condition attached to stability there but, but we are not looking at the 3d case we're just going to concentrate on the on the 2d okay so that is basically the uh, adi method this is a summary of the procedure solve this equation for the uh, intermediate uh, approximate solution you tell that using the thomas algorithm because the right hand side is known and then once you have you tell that you plug them in here then the right side hand side of the next step is known and then you solve for your final solution as a step time step or time level n plus one and that gives you your final solution all right so that is the summary of the procedure for the adi adi method okay now a few uh, remarks are in order here um note that here when you are solving this first step you are you are solving for u tilde here but note that when uh, the problem is set up the boundary conditions okay the boundary conditions are often are often set up um for the actual u not u tilde which means you have to come up with a, a clever um, a more careful way of designing boundary conditions for the utilda all right and sometimes you can use these equations themselves to come up with a with a, a boundary conditions for it because you need the boundary conditions for utilda when you are solving this equation and then the next lecture which is going to be very short actually will cover that moreover uh this utilda is actually not uh a solution at let's say an intermediate time level all right so when you get you told that it is not like um not necessarily um does it represent a solution at an intermediate time level for instance if you are solving from time level one to time level two you tell that does not mean that you have a solution at time level 1.5 that's not what it means okay it's just a preliminary approximation which is used to help you to get to the final solution so you have to be careful how you interpret you tell that and then i've talked about the uh, boundary condition issue that you have to be careful of which we'll discuss later on um, there's an example that we'll do in our next lecture of how to get the boundary conditions for you tell that when solving this um, equation using the idea idea method okay so we'll look at that later on 